This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Reynolds versus Thomas. Ms. Reynolds, you brought your sister here with you. You're suing Mr. Thomas for injuries you sustained when this dumpster hit you and caused severe problems for you. You're asking this court to award you $40,000 for your past medicals, $60,000 for your future medicals, and $1.4 million for pain and suffering for a total of $1.5 million. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Thomas, you believe you've taken all the safety precautions you needed to take. Had she gotten out the way, this never would have happened, true? Yes, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Reynolds, what, what brought you in contact with a dumpster this day? Well, Your Honor, my sister and I were cleaning out our late brother's house. And I'm was... sorry for your loss. Thank you. He was a hoarder. I know exaggeration about it. As and in the classic sense? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And um, I, it was more than we could handle. That's a big job. It, it was enormous. So I found the flyer from the defendant about his business and it was something called Man Manly Men Man. Waste Removal. We thought that that'll be great. We contact him thinking he's going to send us these, you know, young, strapping, strong, strong guys studs help us get this stuff out so we can sell the house. Y'all wanted studs to move the trash. Well, we Strong. if you would have seen man. it, that's what's needed. That I'm just being honest. So, Mr. Thomas, tell me about Manly Men. I mean, is this a group of studs that move trash? Personally, Your Honor, I don't know what kind of men she was expecting. Um, I've been in this business for 20 years. I've never had an accident or injury up to this point. I'm not sure what kind of man she was expecting, but I mean, you're no spring chicken yourself. Yeah, but well, I'm, well, hold on, hold on now. I'm hold not on, listen, listen. I'm First thing we're gonna do. Myself. Hold on for a minute. First thing we are going to do is let you understand this is my courtroom. Yes, Thank sir. You. In my courtroom, no one gets insulted. Yes, sir. Thank you. So is this what your brother's house looked like? Yes, Your Honor, and that's why we needed help. I was very honest with him about the situation. I if it was something moderate, we could have done it ourselves. It was way beyond what we could handle. So he shouldn't have been surprised that a big dumpster was needed. No, and, and this is how he promotes his company. So I, I'm sorry, that's how we had an image, by the way he promotes himself. So we were less than impressed when him and his partner show up and we get these two middle-aged lazy slobs. Okay, so hold on for a minute. There's goose and gander theory in this courtroom. Just like I don't want him to insult you, you can't insult him. We can't do that. Yes. This is a courtroom. We have decorum and we got to respect each other, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so Ms. Reynolds, the dumpster is delivered to your brother's house. Now tell me what happened. We had gone over the paperwork, and and then all of a sudden he just left. We didn't know where he was. No, well, he, we saw him get in the in the truck, but he didn't give us any instructions. So I thought maybe he was going to get me a receipt or something for what we had agreed on. And the next thing that I know is this dumpster is coming down the driveway, headed straight for me. I mean, bam, it hits me, knocks me down. I hit my head on the pavement. Mr. That's Thomas, I mean, this sounds like a booby honor. trap. What happened? I explained to her, I'm getting ready to put this dumpster down because I've got to leave it here for a couple of days. I need you to move off of the driveway. You said that, I said Your that. Honor, my he associate. Never did you hear said, that? He never said that. I was waiting for him. He just walked away, and I turn around, and suddenly I see the dumpster coming straight at me. I tried to get Your out Honor. of the way, but I had just had foot surgery, so I couldn't. Plus, I was standing, he showed me those blocks he put up, and he said that was the safety for that. So I was way behind those blocks, and I thought I was safe. You submitted a diagram to this court. I want you to put me there with you and, and walk through the diagram. Are you okay to come over to yes. the plasma? Take yes, your time. Yes, Your Honor, I am. I want you to tell me how this happened, because this seems like the freakiest thing ever. It was. 
It shouldn't have happened, Your Honor, but I absolutely warned her to get out of the way. I put you the chalks down. What's the purpose for that? These, when the dumpster hits them, it applies weight because of the way they're stepped, and it stops it. Okay, we so use you have put those down. We use dumpsters. We use them for stopping 18-wheelers. All right. You name it. Okay. Now, Miss Reynolds. Yes, sir. Tell me how this happened. I, I see somebody with a cane there. I take okay. it that's you. Yes, that's yeah. me. All right. And here's the dumpster. So I see the dumpster rolling down the driveway straight at me. I mean, it hits me, knocks me to the ground, my head goes crashing on the driveway. It literally rolls right over me. And now I'm suffering because of his negligence. You're Judge, suffering my because you stood died behind the under that Who dumpster. Who stands behind Yes, ma'am. That, that's exactly what I was thinking. That, like that this could have been a death case. So, Mr. Thomas told you to stand back there? No. Yes, he was showing me the blocks and he said, stay behind here and you'll be safe. And in waiting, I trusted him and he's untrustworthy because then this thing came <laughs> crashing down towards me. Sheriff Matt, would you help Miss Reynolds back to the podium? Yes, sir. Take your time. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, Mr. Thomas, Tell me why your blocks didn't do what they were supposed to do. I actually brought a what? diagram to, to explain that. All right, well, let's put your diagram up there. You show me how this happened. So as you can see here, this is the dumpster. These All are right. the wheels. This is a pothole that was in her driveway. Her driveway was in an extreme state of disrepair. And these are the chocks. All right. This is where she decided to stand. This is not where I told her to stand. You'll see this pothole right here. Okay. As the, as the dumpster came down, it slid down and it hits this pothole. And when it did, it stopped the left wheel and the right side kind of veered over oh, and oh. missed the chalk and hit her. Judge, okay. I can't This is why you don't so stand behind the dumpster. this is kind of a freaky, it is. freaky accident. It is. But this is why you don't stand behind the dumpster, Your Honor. There are potholes everywhere. But Your, your Honor, he's talking as if now, all of a sudden, this pothole caught him by surprise. Yeah. Well, what a joke. Yeah, with all he had years to pass experience. that pothole to get that freaking dumpster up by the house. How come he missed it on the way up and he's so shocked by yeah. it on the way down? <laughs> so, so he's like blaming me. This was not even my house. Ms. This is my brother's house. He's blaming me for the potholes in the driveway? Well, it, it's, it's not really blame. It's who saw the pothole and knew what it meant to this situation. Uh, the more you lean on this pothole, the more it becomes obvious to everybody. You saw it too, right? Yes, it had, it had been there forever. And I can't believe that's the only street he's ever had where there was a pothole. Ms. Reynolds, you've submitted to this court $40,000 in medical bills. I'm flipping through them. You, you've been through a lot. You're asking this court to award you another $60,000 for your future meds. So you've got a long road ahead of you. My leg is healing, and the doctors tell me as soon as my leg actually heals, I've got to have hip replacement surgery because That's of a big the deal. Yes, sir and the damage that it did to my hip. So I'm trying to get one part to heal before we move on to the next part. Yes, yes ma'am. Well, to better understand the nature of your injuries from a medical perspective, this court has consulted a sports medicine physician, Dr. Wesley Bailey. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Bailey for us? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, Dr. Bailey. Good day, sir. Can you explain the nature of Ms. Reynolds' injuries? Well, well, Your Honor, the plaintiff suffered multiple injuries uh, all over her body. These include a fracture of her left arm as well as multiple fractures of her leg. Ms. Reynolds mentioned the need for hip replacement surgery. W what does that involve? Basically, the surgeon will make uh, one to two incisions or uh, carefully place cuts into the hip joint. They'll scrape out the cartilage in the hip socket, and these parts will be replaced with prostheses made of either metal or high-grade plastic, and then a new top end will be placed into the hip bone. What's her pain experience going to be like even after these injuries heal? She may still experience chronic pain at uh, all or some of these uh, fracture sites. All right, doctor, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you, for visiting us. You are released. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thomas, this was a disaster for Ms. Reynolds. You see that? I do. I do. And, and I'm really sorry that she got hurt. But again, this is not my fault. 
Now, you pointed out this giant pothole. Yes, sir. You saw that driving up there, didn't you? To be honest with you, no, sir, I did not. I did not oh, notice it. So yeah. if these blocks had acted the way they were supposed to, and if the bin did not pivot, would they have just stopped it where the blocks are? It would have moved maybe a half inch and then stopped. She would have been safe if everything had worked perfectly. But we live in a world where things don't work perfectly. That's why I told her to move out of the way. Now, Mr. Thomas makes an interesting point. It's not like this was a Maserati moving down the driveway. Right. Okay? Right. When this is coming at you, what were you thinking? Get the hell out of the way! <laughs> And I couldn't move late. fast enough. I turned. I was trying to get to the side of the driveway, but because of, uh, of the surgery that I've already had, I couldn't move that fast. So all of a sudden, it slams into me, hits me, literally rolls over my leg. It mangles yeah, this my, been my, a my leg. You're, you're so, so Ms. Reynolds, you've asked this court to award you $1.4 million dollars for your pain and suffering. Yes, sir. Please tell me about that. That's a lot of money. Yes, sir, it is. I had already had this surgery I was recovering from, and then because of his negligence, I had to have that all surgery all over again and worse. And I'm told that I need to expect this for the rest of my life. So I'm going to be paying mm -mm. the price for his negligence because mm -mm. this meathead, I'm sorry, Your Honor. We're not going to do I'm that. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It slipped out. I know this is important to you, but we, we can't resort to insult. No, you're, you're right, Your Honor. And yes, I don't normally behave like that. But yes, I'm, I'm. Thank you. I've been Her motive told, is purely money, I've Your Honor. I've been told that I'm looking at a lifetime of pain. You just said her motive was purely money? She wants to sue me for $1.4 million? Well, you do see that she's got pretty severe injuries, right? And I am sorry that she's hurt, but $1.4 million? This is purely motivational money. In your money. honor, That's all we were about. solving the money problem. Well, you know, we, I was we, feeling you there for a minute until you turned on the ice cubes. We, I haven't heard you say one time during this whole proceeding to her, look, regardless of whether this is my fault, I'm really sorry you're hurt. I have tried You've got to feel that. bad about that. Your Honor, I have tried to say that. She now, has. now, let me tell you something else. Even if you apologize, when people come into a courtroom and they truly feel sorry about something, they're afraid to say I'm sorry because they think that indicates fault. Under the law, it does not. It indicates you have a heart and that you're human. So if you want and an opportunity to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry she got hurt. Tell her. But I am sorry you got hurt. I don't believe anything you have well, to say to me. Well, I don't really believe I've anything you have to say either to because you've come out of the bag. Order here. in this That's court. What sorry about. Your Honor. I've heard enough. I've heard everything I need to render a decision, and I'm ready to do that. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Reynolds, you've got to prove three things. You've got to prove that the defendant was wrong and that the defendant's wrong caused your harm. But being harmed alone does not mean you win. What I've got to figure out is whether you prove that Mr. Thomas was wrong. Mm -hmm. Here, you've put up evidence that he told you to stand where you stood in this driveway beyond these barriers that are designed to stop this bin if it slides a little bit as Mr. Thomas uh, anticipated. You didn't think this thing was going to keep rolling despite how steep this driveway was. Yes. But the thing that neither of you all anticipated is that a pothole would change both your lives. Yes. Under the law, when you have an activity such as a dumpster that's 5,000 pounds on a steep driveway that's in disrepair, you are the professional. You are called to, to notice those things and to take those into consideration in your safety equation because safety's first. Yes, Your Honor. You did not anticipate the pothole, and because of that, your safe operation turned into something that was very, very unsafe. Ms. Reynolds, I find that you have proven the wrong. You've proven that Mr. Thomas was wrong in not anticipating that pothole. Thank Whether you. he warned you or not, he should have known about that pothole. Thank I you. find you've proven his wrong. But he is not wrong by himself. 
Some common sense has to kick in even if you're hobbled with a bad foot. You can't be standing at the bottom of a driveway right. with a 5,000 right. pound weight about to come at you, blocks or not. This case is a classic comparative fault case, comparing your fault to your fault. Here I find you are 80% responsible, and Ms. Reynolds, I find that you are 20% responsible. So I find in your favor, in the amount of $1.2 million and against Mr. Thomas, and that is my final verdict. This matter is concluded. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Leonard Lundy has to say. The defendant had superior knowledge of the dangers of unloading a large metal dumpster off his truck, and yet he failed to warn the plaintiff of those dangers. He drove up the driveway and should have seen it was on a steep slope and in disrepair. As a professional driver, he should have made sure the plaintiff was out of the way before releasing the dumpster. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Young versus Adams. It's my understanding, Mr. and Mrs. Young, that you are suing your next door neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, for injuries that Mrs. Young sustained when the Adams' bats got in your house and attacked her. You're asking this court to award you $25,000 for your past medicals and $95,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $120,000. You were attacked by these kinds of bats? Yes, yes Your Honor. Your Honor. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, you all don't believe that this is your fault. First of all, you don't think these were your bats, and secondly, if they had cared for themselves, this never would have happened, true? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, tell me what led to bats getting in your house. Yes, Your Honor, so we're avid DIYers, do-it-yourself. Uh, we love renovating homes and doing home projects. And so recently, my wife thought it was a great idea if we uh, converted the detached garage from my mother um, so it could be an in-law suite, a granny apartment, so to speak. There's still a lot that needs to be done, insulation, drywall, painting. Mm -hmm. And you can see we've already done some work on the, in the bathroom, but we had to stop to get a plumbing license. So at the time that this happened, you weren't finished. Correct, Your Honor. And you did all this to make sure your mother would have a place to be. Yes, Your Honor. My mother is getting old in age, and she's divorced. I happen to be an only child, so I wanted her close to me. That's a beautiful thing. Mr. and Mrs. Adams, how'd y'all come to have bats? We live a very different lifestyle. We do a lot of homesteading. We have a very natural life. We go through and we actually have a, a greenhouse and we plant our own vegetables. We have a chicken coop. We just, we live a very, you know, self-sustaining life. Minimizing your global footprint, huh? Absolutely. Okay, well, what's Beth got to do with it? Both of our properties are backed up to some woods and there's a river back there which is home to a lot of insects, mainly mosquitoes. And so when we moved in, we noticed that there were a lot of mosquitoes, so much that we couldn't really enjoy ourselves out on our back porch. So we decided to do the all natural thing, which was to attract bats to our backyard to help control the mosquito population because bats can eat up to a thousand mosquitoes per hour. So bats do better than those mosquito zappers that you get at the hardware absolutely, store? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. We're an all natural family and uh, you know, unlike the youngs here, we don't like to spray pesticides or insecticides. We decide to do things as best we can in an all natural, eco-friendly way. Mr. and Mrs. Young, did you all know that they were kind of naturalists who... Uh... Oh, yes. I feel like we've actually been quite understanding of their naturalistic ways. They have chicken coops and you can imagine it's very loud, especially early in the morning and it's smells not so pleasant either. Um, Take me to the day that you got injured. I had pneumonia for a couple weeks and finally uh, I was actually feeling better and Justin and I actually had a weekend that we were off. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on his mother's apartment again and um, 
That day he actually went to the garage to get all the tools and I went to the apartment by myself and I went to the bathroom just to like clear everything up because that's where we, we stopped last time. Okay. And I saw this um, spongy uh, mold on the shower part and I was like, okay, well, we haven't been there in a couple weeks, understandably, so things might happen. And so I, uh, I got all my cleaning supplies and um, I started uh, cleaning the, the spot and it actually jumped up at me and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't mold, it was actually a bat. And, and there, was a, uh, there was wings and there was, um, like it kept biting at me and attacking me and, and I, I just, I thought that it was just that and then all of a sudden it felt like there were hundreds of bats everywhere and there was just wings and screaming and, and, and even now sometimes I still, um, I have nightmares about that incident and, and I just kind of... So you originally thought this was a glob of some kind of mold from being left alone. You yes, disturb it and it's a bat that attacks you? Yes, Your Honor. And you said there were others in there? There, it felt like there were hundreds at least. Sounds like a movie. That's exactly what it felt like, Your Honor. So I was in the garage and then getting the tools and supplies. I hear my wife scream and it's a bone chilling scream. I've never heard her sound like this. I run to the detached garage and I look and all these bats are just flying out like it's a movie. And so I, I go in, see my wife, she's in the fetal position laying in, in bat poop, guano essentially. So I'm trying to get to her. I'm beating these bats left and right, trying to get to her. I pick her up and I rush her to the ER because I think she might have rabies or contracted some other disease from that. I see the scratches on your wife's arms. I mean, they, this must have been really bad. It, it was, Your Honor. It's been life-changing for us. This was a real bad attack. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Adams, um, y'all are next door. How do bats get into their property? We hate that this happened to them. And, and we've, but we want to make a point that Bats, they don't uh, just randomly attack human beings. They, they have to be disturbed in order for that to happen. So yeah. if you're gonna scrub a bat, of course it's gonna freak out and bite you. They're, they're, they're wild animals. They say that they're not responsible, but you guys had bat boxes. You to deliberately attract attracted bats. these bats to our to bat property. boxes, not to years. your garage. We well, for folks, eight years without... What is a bat box? Your Honor, this is a bat box right here. That's and a bat box. This is yes. right okay, here. Yes. Okay, okay. I so, wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the bat box. So inside of this is, uh, they're just ridges, like just on the outside of this. So or, they can hang. Right, so they just put their claws in, they just hang upside down, and they stay there. Hold on, please tell me you don't have a bats in there. Right? We this one, no, no, no. Oh, okay, no, okay. No, of course okay, not. No, no, no. Have no. Run like, check a, for you. like a fifth grader. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so you it's not put, show and tell. <laughs> you put these bat boxes no. on your property? Several, Your Honor. Yes. M more than one? Yeah, there's three. We right three. by the his mother's. Right. So, but but the again, line. they are so on the our property. But they the are. purpose for the bat boxes is to have somewhere to stay. Yes, Your Honor. So Your it's kind of like a bat motel. Yes, Your Honor. How many of these bat boxes did you have on your property? Three, yeah, three. Your Honor. But this kind of makes y'all Batman and Batwoman, right? <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> so, Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all believe that, that the bats belong to them because they invited them to the property. Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. It's, it's very obvious. We've been in this house for eight years, and for the past year, uh, we've, we've seen an uptick in bats. For seven years, our detached garage have, has never had any bats. They actually put bird bats in their front yard, and that apparently, we've done the research, is something that bats are attracted to. It gives them water, it gives them somewhere to, to chill, or it's like a freaking bat oasis or something. I had a cat come by my house one time, and I was kind to that cat. I gave that cat a can of tuna fish. That became my cat as long as I fed it. Aren't these your bats if you give them a place to stay? Your Honor. They, they, we don't consider these bats our pets. We haven't named them. I, I, I assume, did you, Your Honor, did you name the cat? Uh, no, I just called him Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all are asking this court to reimburse you for $25,000 in medical expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Tell me Honor. about that. After I rushed her to the ER, she had to get treated for rabies, and it was That's a very really trying scary. ordeal. And she can tell you more about that. Have you seen a rabies shot? It's the, the needle's very long, and it's not just one shot. It's like you have to go there several times. According to your medical papers, you had a, a condition called histoplasmosis. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Your Honor. 
I actually thought that it was just pneumonia again because um, I was getting chest pains. I was I kept coughing. There was one day when Justin and I were just cleaning the house and I was standing over the sink and all of a sudden that's the last thing I remember. You passed out. Yes, Your Honor. So yeah. while, while she's cleaning the sink, I just noticed all of a sudden we're mid-conversation and she just goes flat. She had a seizure, Your Honor. So this was a real sickness following this bad attack. And not only yes, that, Your Honor. But it's... My wife could have died. I mean, it's, it, it's been terrible. To understand these bats, because it doesn't sound like any of us really understand what they do, this court has consulted a bat expert, Mr. Robert Hood. Sheriff, will you get Mr. Hood and bring him in the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you know bats, right? Yes, I've been working with bats for over 20 years now. How is it possible that a homeowner gets bats in their house? Well, bats are very small mammals. So as a homeowner, if you're not spending the night in the attic or if you're not outside at dusk and dawn... That looks like a, a rat with a good PR agent. <laughs> it, it's crawling yeah. into holes. That's what bats do? They crawl into the holes in your house? Yes. So as you can see, that if there's a gap the size of your thumb, the bat can fit into it. So it's very difficult for a homeowner to notice that these areas are around their home. What are the complications of a bat infestation? One will be the threat of rabies. If you had some bats that are active and came down into the living space, you could be scratched or bitten, and of and, course... And uh, that's rabies. how it looks in people's attics? Yes, that is. So that's a, that's a particular attic that I went to that had hundreds of bats flying around. Uh, another problem that you can have is histoplasmosis. It's actually a fungus that grows on accumulation, large accumulations of guano. So if you are breathing those spores, then of course you could possibly contract histoplasmosis. And what is, is guano? The, guano is the fecal matter, the excrement, that's left behind from the from the bats that are roosting. Well, how do you get rid of them? Well, essentially, a professional comes out, going to look at the home, any type of gap that you have that a thumb can stick into, 306 degrees around the house, about four feet off the ground to the tip of the roof, needs to be sealed. And in the place where they're coming in and out, you have to put up an apparatus that allows them to fly out, but they can't re-enter in the morning. So essentially, we evict the bats. Well, I got to call you Batman. Thank you so much. You're welcome, y'all. You are released, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Young, how far are these bat boxes from your garage where you were building this apartment? They're probably Not 10 far. feet or closer from the fence I line. I wouldn't even say closer than... You submitted a diagram to this court. I want you to explain it to me once we put it up on the plasma here. Could you go over there, Mr. Young? <clears throat> okay. Tell me what we're looking at. As you can see, this is my mother's apartment, future apartment. This backside is where the bathroom work was being done, the plumbing and whatnot. These are the bat boxes, so they're not very far from the fence line. And then here's the Adams house there. All right, so you may return to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you. They left the garage door open in this several nights. They're, they're, they're missing that piece of information to you. So you think it's pretty simple. They could have closed off things and it wouldn't have been a problem, right? Well, yes, Your Honor. They were over there back there. They're fixing up their apartment. They should be doing the necessary uh, duties we, of yeah. checking for those holes already. Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all are asking this court to award you $95,000 for pain and suffering. Tell me about that experience and why I should make that kind of award. After my wife had the seizure, it's taken a toll on our marriage as well as our home life. I'm not able to go out and do the, the home improvement stuff that we've been able to do. I'm also an outdoors person, perhaps not as granola as they are, but I do like the outdoors. And even then, I can't, you know, do things that I used to love. I get coughs a lot. Um, so you've got some fatigue, some cough, some lethargy that uh, doesn't allow you to do the thing with your husband. And also the husband. medication I have to take for the histoplasmosis. It's also expensive. I, I'm a little surprised that you all have not put a little more heart into this. We did, well, Your Honor. Well, we hold, actually... hold on. Yes, sir. You invited these bats to the property. It is no coincidence that there are bats in their property once you put these boxes out. I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case such as this, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You've got to prove that the defendants were wrong. That's the first thing. You've got to prove that their wrong caused your harm. The legal issue is, 
are the Adamses responsible for this harm? Now, you all have put up evidence that you didn't have any problems with bats until they put the bat boxes out near your house. Mm -hmm. The way this should have worked is you finish the apartment for your mother, your mother-in-law, she moves in, and y'all never meet me. Mm -hmm. Instead, they invite hundreds of bats to the party. Mm -hmm. One or more or a hundred gets into your place. You go up to clean and disturb one of these bats, and you are viciously attacked. The law can compensate you by allowing a money award. However, the law does not relieve you of the emotional burden. It relieves you of the financial burden, doesn't relieve you of the physical burden. So I understand this is a weight on you in a bunch of respects. You all look at me with wonderment and say, how could this be our fault? These are wild animals. We were doing a good thing. We didn't want to go get a bug zapper. We invited bats. They would do it the natural way. In fact, these bat boxes were a benefit to the Youngses. There is harm, but frankly, folks, inviting bats to your property is not a wrong. Does it, does it cause us to have certain opinions about things? But they did not break the law, and there's nothing that says that this was irresponsible. Bats can get into anyone's home when they leave it open. Your home was left open. I don't blame you, but just like they invited the bats with the boxes, you invited the bats with your home being open. I find you did not prove that the Adamses were wrong, and I find against you and in their favor, despite how much I feel for what you all have been through, I find in your favor. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. Interesting case. The big question, did the defendants create a condition on their property that attracted bats and allowed them to nest in the couple's garage? The bats are naturally occurring animals in the environment and the plaintiffs left the garage door and the renovations open, which allowed the bats to enter. The plaintiff did not prove the defendant actions were the proximate cause of the bats inhabiting their garage. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is Brown versus Horowitz. It's my understanding, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, that you all are suing Mr. Horowitz for failing to put in a floor at your jazz club. You went there and you stepped into your jazz club and fell into the basement, suffering terrible injuries. You're asking this court to award $100,000 for your medical bills, $50,000 for future medical bills, $200,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $350,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Horowitz, it's your position, based on what you filed with this court, that they should not have been there that night. Had they done what they were supposed to do, he would have never been injured, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, now Mr. Brown, tell me what happened. Your Honor, I had a dream. And my dream was to create and open my own jazz club because I'm a jazz musician. I want a place where my friends can come jam and I could bring some of my famous friends to come in and perform. You're touching and, me in my heart. I play a saxophone and I okay. was a jazz DJ when I was in college. Oh, that's okay. So you got your jazz club. Yeah, Talk so to how I got to know Mr. Horowitz here is through my wife who is in real estate. How much work were you gonna have to do on this club to get it ready? Oh, the club needed a lot of work. It was a it was an old building. We was, uh, she was able to help secure a good deal on. Total renovation. So, Mr. Horowitz, you remember when they hired you, right? Yes, sir. Okay, what were, what did you understand you were supposed to do? Well, sir, you know uh, I own Horowitz uh, Construction, and we believe in the American. How region. long y'all been in business? Twenty years, sir. Proud so you've of. been doing this a while. Yeah, generations. Uh, my, my grandfather was in construction during the Depression, so, uh, you know, we got construction in our blood. We got yes, sir. sawdust in our veins, Your Honor. Yes, that's what my dad used to say. The Browns came to us, and, you know, they was talking about their dream, and the more he got, he got, more he got passionate about it, the more I got passionate about it. Because so you I believe like in this project. Dreams. I believe in the dreams. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Brown, your dream turned somehow into a nightmare. How did this happen? 
My wife wanted to see the building, and particularly the sunken floor. So we were out and about on a date night we try to have every now and then. And we were not far from the building. And we arrived at the building. I had my key, walked in through the front door. I stepped in. Your Honor, I fell down 20 feet into the basement. Was your wife felt, next to you with this? Ms. Yes, Brown, were you behind you, me? Did I you fell see on this? a pile of rubble? Yes, Your as Honor. As you can see on that picture, uh, uh, all the construction trash. I fell on top of all that. So the, you the fell scaffold, through this hole? The, the nails, the mud, everything. Yes, Your Honor. I thought I was dead. It was awful. I, I tried to reach for him. I dropped my phone. I was panicking and screaming. Blood was everywhere. I guess when you hit this debris, you realize you're pretty badly hurt. I, I, Your Honor, I thought I was gone. A passerby heard me screaming, so they called 911. They had to put a crane down in the basement to get my husband up. That's all I could remember. The doctor told us to call our pastor for his last rites. That's how awful it was. Mr. Horowitz, you, you, you see this is pretty bad stuff, right? Oh, yes, yes, sir. In the 20 years that I've run that construction company, we've never had an incident, neither... Never neither, have? Neither client nor uh, nor worker has ever had an accident quite like Your that. Honor, now, why do you was... think that is, that you haven't had an incident in 20 years? That's because I practice safety all the time, Your Honor. That's construction. It always, it's always hazardous. So well, I Mr. Mrs. Brown, you all else. knew that your place wasn't finished, right? We knew it was, it was supposed to be finished from what I've seen already because I visited the site like three days earlier. And Clearly, uh, you thought the floor was there. Right, yes, exactly. Uh, so exactly. why wouldn't that be reasonable for them to expect that the floor is there? Well, Your Honor, at the very beginning of all this, we set out blueprints for the client to look at. Okay. So they can approve them. That's what uh, we do. So we make sure we're all on the same page. Now, you've Those submitted right something. Is, is this the blueprint you're yes, talking sir, about? Yes, it is. Now, t walk me through this. What, uh, what are we looking at here? This is the blueprints for the jazz club itself. Oh, okay. Oh, you see the stage area, the dance area. Over here, we got the dining and the bar. And this everything. is a nice place. Now, that's where the sunken floor is supposed to go in. And where, where it says now, front now, door... Now, this front door is right here by the sunken door because it's part of the lobby. It's part of the entranceway. Mr. and Mrs. Now, Brown, you all went in the front door? Yes, Your yes, Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Well, when you all got now, to the property, was the door locked? It was yes, locked, it was but locked. we have a key. We have a key. Well, yes. didn't that tell no, you something? Your Honor, three days ago... No, sir. I, I, three, can't, I can't hear them when you talk in my ear. No, so sir. when you got there, the door was locked. Well, it's supposed Correct. to be locked, Your Honor. I mean, he's, he's not there, so he locks it up when he leaves. But there was no sign. There was no yellow tape. There was nothing saying that we could not enter. So, so if the door is there. locked and they have a key, isn't it reasonable that they go in to a place that they own? I don't understand why they would come in over here when three days beforehand, he knew that there was a construction entrance right here in the back. And he could come in here. As a matter of fact, that's where he came. Mr. Horowitz, you may go back to your podium. I did go through the back door. I glanced at everything. Everything appeared to be in, uh, in order and everything. But was there a floor when you went in three days before? The area that, uh, that covered the, where the sunken floor is was, was, was closed off. So there was no way for me to, to have known that. So you didn't go through the front door that time, the few days before. No, did Your Honor. You, did you even go near the front door? Did you see anything near the, d yes, the front Your Honor. door? I did see three days prior to the accident a sign that said, "Do not enter with the tape. Do not cross." So it now, wasn't on there the day we went. On Your the Honor. night in question, was there a sign there? No, Your Honor. Nothing, nothing at all. No tape. No sign. Nothing. Your Honor, if you saw that building the night we went there, you think it was open for business? Yes. There, there was no indication that, that it was a construction site. According to the schedule, this, this uh, floor was supposed to have been done by week seven. When we arrived, it was week nine. So there's no way there should and not have been a floor. And the floor still wasn't there. But Mr. and Mrs. Brown, you can't just walk into a place at night, whether you own it or not, and, and just assume that, it, that it's all right. Well, right? Your Honor, all due respect, we weren't informed about any delays or any issues. And oh, now, you, I did inform you that there was going to be a delay. No, you didn't. Yes, I no, did. Your Honor, we have a well, contract. Now, I haven't seen a construction project that was on time. Well, sir, he did not let us know. He didn't let us know. Your Honor, he didn't let us know if there was any delays or anything. At all. Now, your Honor. Yes, sir. Now, as, as you've already stated, it's 
it's hard to stay on a schedule in construction. Yes, sir. Mainly because a lot of times it's 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 not our fault. Right. We get behind. Sometimes it's about the weather. Change Some, orders, things of that sort. Things of that sort. Now, in this particular case, it was about supply and demand. Well, you have to communicate was, that with us. It was, yes. Tell me about supply and demand. I'll tell you about supply and demand, Your Honor. Because uh, it's not easy when, for contractors. No. When 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 we got to that part about the sunken floor. Okay. We already started the demo. Then we get a call from our supplier saying that the top of wood we need. And well, see, that's not, not in your control. Yeah, that's the beyond our control. So now, did you let the Browns it, know that? Yes, sir, I did. And so, oh, how did you let them know? I let them know through through uh, telephone voicemail. Did Did you ever get the voicemail? Yes, Your Honor. After the fact. After so he, he was injured. He did leave a voicemail. Y'all just didn't pick it up until later. Right. As I as yeah, I, well, I explained so, earlier. So had you picked it up you would have known that this floor was not finished. Your Honor, there were multiple ways he could have got in contact with us, not just leaving a voicemail. But he tried. But there's other ways, Your Honor. He could have emailed, he could have texted, he could have done anything. And once again, the See, sign just... was removed from the front door. If it's something it said, that serious, you would it, reach it just, out. It just seems to me that if you had picked up the voicemail, you wouldn't have $100,000 of medical expenses. I see on the plasma there's a week schedule. Now, uh, if you go according to this schedule, Mr. Mm -hmm. Horowitz, by week nine, the end of week nine, you're done, right? That's the way it's supposed to work out. Yes. So yes, at hurts. the time when the Browns walked through their front door, what week were we in? We were in week nine, Your Honor. So the floor should have been installed by week seven. Yes, sir. Like I said, we had a problem getting the wood in on time. And you tried to let them the know that. I did try to let them know that. And in the meantime, what we did was, instead of stopping our work and sitting on our hands waiting for wood and delaying the entire schedule, we went ahead and worked on all the other things that we could have worked on. You sound like a good contractor. I try to work hard. I work hard for my money. I work hard for my family. I yes, work sir. hard for these people who, who, who want to see their dreams come true. That's what I'm all about. Your well, Honor, you wouldn't be I'm in business 20 years if you didn't. So, Mr. Brown, you and Mrs. Brown step through. You fall into the hole. 911 is called. At some point, you realize the extent of your injuries. What are they? That fractured shoulder. My, 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 my hip was replaced. You're a relatively young man. How old are you? I'm 44, Your Honor. So you had a hip replacement at 44. Tell yes, me your about Honor. your shoulder. Um, my shoulder was fractured as well. To understand your injuries, I want to talk to Dr. Karen Flood. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring her in and let her explain this to us. So, Sheriff, would you uh, get Dr. Flood for us? Yes, Your Honor. Hello, doctor. Hello, Your Honor. Would you state your name for the record? My name is Dr. Karen Flood. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. And doctor, what does an orthopedic surgeon do? Well, we fix the uh, bones and joints. So anywhere from the shoulders out, from the hips down, there's also orthopedic spine surgeons. Now, will you explain to me the nature and severity of Mr. Brown's injuries? Yes, Your Honor. When Mr. Brown fell, he suffered multiple injuries, as you know. He uh, broke his shoulder, he broke his wrist, and he also broke his right hip joint. And the right hip is what I'm, is the most concerning of his injuries. Uh, the reason for that is the hip is a ball and socket joint. And what he did was he knocked the ball right off the thigh bone. And when you do that, the blood supply to the femoral head, the ball part, can get disrupted, and then the bone actually dies. So this was bad stuff. This is a big deal. How exactly do you repair an injury like that? Well, in most cases, we actually replace the hip. I've got a video if you'd like to see it. I would. Can. I would. Please uh, take us through this. So this is a, the patient getting ready for surgery. You see we've got them all positioned here on the table. They've got their feet in traction. Here's the hip joint up here. So he's done the work for me. He's knocked the hip joint off. And now I'm going to replace it by putting a brooch down inside the thigh bone that opens up a hole in the thigh unless we put the actual hip replacement down into the joint. So now, do you ball pound that thing ball. down into I the do. thigh? I do. We have a mallet that knocks it down oh. in. And then we replace the hip socket first by reaming out that socket and then relocate the hip. But you have to dislocate the hip in order to replace it. You put it back in place and then that allows you to get a little bit of motion back in your hip. He's 44 years old. How, how common is it that you get a hip replacement? Well, it's not as common. And the problem with that, of course, is this hip is eventually going to wear out. About another 20 years, he's probably going to get, gonna need to get it replaced. So around the time he's about to retire, he's going to have a hip replacement. He's going to have another hip replacement. That one's harder because I have to take out more bone in order to do that. You take more. So every time you do it, it's a more complicated procedure. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. You may be released. So, Mr. Horowitz, you see that this has been very heavy for the Browns, right? Yes, sir, I do. And, uh... 
These folks, regardless of where you assign fault, he's going to be dealing with this for a while. Does your heart get touched on that? Well, of course it does, Your Honor. I mean, when, when I found out what happened and I saw the incident report, I was, I was horrified. In all honesty, I mean, if, if he hadn't walked in where he wasn't supposed to be, then none of this would have happened to him. I made it plainly clear no. to him that it was dangerous they so this to be in there. Should have had Wham to the sign that was should've on the door three days tape. before. He took it off, Your Honor. Well, the, the, the I made... sign. Why was that removed? <sighs> that place was ready for, for business. That the place was not was ready for the, business. The front door was when, painted, Your when Honor. When I do the construction, I'm the one... Order in this court. Mr. Horowitz, I can see that you tried to warn the Browns. You yes, locked sir. the door, you tried to call them. Yes, sir. I can imagine this was shocking and disappointing to you. I mean, I'd never had anything like this ever happen. I've never had a client just show up at the job site at night when nobody is there and just let themselves in. It's our building. And Until it, this construction and it was is done, and nine. I say it's safe, you shouldn't even be going in there it without any kind of escort, It was week nine. It was finished. Order in this court. Mm -hmm. Folks, I think I've heard everything I need to hear. I'm ready to make my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. The plaintiff has to prove that the defendant did something wrong and that wrong caused your injuries. Clearly, you were injured from this terrible fall at your club. Here, you all reasonably thought that the floor was in because according to the schedule, it should have been in. You all went in expecting to be excited, imagining all the dancing on the floor, and you fell down 20 feet into a basement with horrible injuries. Mr. Horowitz, when you left that night, you had no idea that this tragedy would happen because you put certain safeguards in place. You locked the door, and you left them a voicemail saying, hey, not finished, don't go in the place, but they didn't pick it up. And because they didn't pick it up, you believe it's their fault. Well, here the law takes a global approach to the evidence. That is, I consider everything. You all have proven that there was something wrong. Clearly, you've proven you're injured and that the wrong caused your injuries. Mr. Horowitz, I find that you tried to warn the Browns. You not only locked the door, but you actually got on the phone and called them trying to leave a message to say, don't go into the place. Now, they didn't pick that message up, and they should have. However, I think you should have done more. You should have warned them. You should have put tape over this door, done whatever it took to avoid a man nearly falling to his death. And in that regard, I find you 100% responsible, and I'm going to award you all every penny of what you seek. $100,000 for past medicals, $50,000 for future medicals, and $200,000 for pain and suffering Thank for you. a total award Thank of $350,000. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. I think the orthopedic surgeon did an outstanding job of explaining what happened to the plaintiff in this fall, as well as what had to be done to treat his injuries. An area of personal injury claims that can often be overlooked involves future medical needs, what type of treatment may be necessary in the future, and how much that will cost. All of this should be presented into evidence so a fair settlement or verdict can be reached.